what are those areas that Satan is asking you again and again to pick up those coins? Is it he saying a little alcohol will not damage you? A little drug will not damage you? A little pornography will not damage you. A one visit to a prostitute will not damage you. A small wrong relationship will not damage you. What kind of thoughts is Satan offering you? What kind of areas that you get so quickly bitter and angry that in that bitterness instead of running to God you run to sin. Is it that you had a wonderful relationship with somebody and it was so close that you almost get got engaged? It might be you both were serving God together. But one fine day, might be, one dropped you and got in relationship with your friend. And now you are bitter, you are hurt, you are in pain. And are you, instead of running to God, running away from Him, In your marriage, what are those areas that Satan is again and again tempting you to lift those coins covered with innocent blood? My friend, right now, ask yourself, what is the price of my soul? Please speak to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is moving and He is shining His light into areas of your life where you need to set right with God. You need to throw out those silver coins. It could be an area where you hated the priests and the religious, where you not forgiven or spoken badly about a preacher, a teacher of God's word, where you have judged, and the Bible says that those who judge will also be judged. Those who condemn will also be condemned. Are you holding on to that silver coin of hatred towards your father or mother? The Bible says, honor your father, honor your mother, honor your father, honor your mother, so that in the days it may go well with you. Are you holding on to that silver coin of gossip in your office, of speaking bad about your colleagues? criticizing your boss, grumbling and complaining. When the Hebrews grumbled and complained in the wilderness, God was angry with them. And he sent forth fiery serpents. 
and those fiery serpents bit them and they died a painful, fiery, poisonous death. And then Moses went and pleaded before God. And God told Moses to put up a bronze serpent. Today, look at the cross. All the poison in your body, all the poison in your emotions, those poisonous thoughts towards your neighbor, someone in your house who you've not forgiven, the bitter poison of offense. Right now, look at the cross in your spirit. Keep your eyes closed, but open your spiritual eyes. Look at Jesus on the cross. And as you look at Jesus, all that poison is being sucked out of your life. All that poison, offense, unforgiveness, Anger, jealousy, rage, pride, I've done it my way without recognizing that it was the hand of Jesus always upon you. What is that silver coin of self-righteousness? Throw it out. Throw it out right now. The cross of Jesus is absorbing right now. The body of Jesus. And as the Hebrews looked up to the bronze serpent, they were healed. And as you look up to the body of Christ on the cross, the body and blood broke into you for you. All that poison is being sucked out of your body right now. There are many of you who are weeping here right now. You are lamenting and you are repenting. The nail-scarred hands of Jesus is drying your eyes. Come to him in repentance. Come to him in brokenness. Do not give excuses. Do not justify and say, he is like that, she is like that. Make a choice right now to throw out those poisonous coins from your life. Those poisonous coins are poisoning your whole system. It is blocking the blessing of God in your life. It is blocking the move of God from your life. You may be sexually abused and you may be very hurt about it right now. Forgive. Forgive. Jesus was persecuted and hurt in the most wicked manner. He was hung naked on the cross. He was laughed at. He was scorned at. He was humiliated and rejected. Even by his own friends who abandoned him. And Jesus knew this was going to happen. That Judas was going to betray him. Still Jesus decided to wash the feet of Judas. Jesus knew that Judas was going to let him down. But that did not stop Jesus from washing the feet of his betrayer. Jesus is washing your feet right now. He is kneeling before you with a towel around his waist and he is washing your feet and he's saying, my child, I did this for you to teach you and to show you how to humble yourself because when you humble yourself, you will be exalted. But the proud, the arrogant will be brought down to their knees. Jesus fed Judas from his own plate. He gave Judas to drink from his own cup. Knowing that Judas is going to betray him. You might feel so let down. You have helped people in life. You have opened your doors to them. You have fed them. But they have rejected you. They've spoken against you. they walked out of you. And you may be holding that coin of bitterness. Forgive them right now. Release them. When you release those who have harmed you and hurt you and offended you, you are releasing yourself into a new glory dimension. You're releasing yourself 
into a position of blessing. You're releasing yourself into a position to receive more of Jesus. Come on, people. Right now, release. 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 <clears throat> the worst words recorded in history is how much will you give me to betray Jesus? How much will you give me to betray Jesus? Judas has gone 2,000 years ago. But are you like a Judas today in the church? Always waiting for a way out to sell your Jesus? By all the bad jokes and the obscene statements that you laugh at and circulate on email and SMS and other social media sites? Or are you truly modeling Jesus in your workplace, in your home and among your friends, at the club and at the bars and at the discs and on the sports field? The worst words in the churches today, what, how much will you give me? What will you give me to betray Jesus? And I will hand him over to you. Every time you sin, you have crucified your Jesus. Every time you have gossiped, you have crucified your Jesus. Every time you have grumbled and complained, you have crucified your Jesus. And you have sold out Jesus. What is your sellout price? What is the price? And Satan is saying, I will pay you what you want. Do not follow Jesus. Do not be like Jesus. Show the world that you belong to me. What is your sellout price? Jesus said to show the other cheek. But have you reacted in anger? Have you reacted by an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Jesus is washing your feet. The washing of forgiveness is happening right now in your heart. It's a very precious sign that you have right now. This is what Jesus came for. To reconcile sinners to God. And God is a holy God. God is a God of holiness. And he says, be holy like I am holy. So right now, friends, there is a great battle going on for your spirit. Right now, right now, there is a raging war that is happening for your soul. And the devil is screaming. He is angry and he is tearing up the place saying, he has sinned. He belongs to me. He has picked up those silver coins. He is mine. Justice says that he has sinned and therefore I am the father of sin and he is my child. He, she is my daughter. They belong to me. But Jesus is standing as the advocate before the father. The auction has begun and the, the is very high for your soul because your soul is precious to God. The devil is chasing and tearing up the place for your soul and Jesus is standing before the throne of God. The bleeding Jesus, the wounded Jesus, the crucified Jesus. And Jesus is saying, this is my child. This is my daughter. This is my son. I want them. I came, John 3.16, so that all may be saved. That all may be saved and no one will be condemned. 
This is my child. I do not condemn my child. I do not reject my child. I have paid the price in full for you. Jesus is saying, my daughter, I have paid the price in full for you. Priceless blood, precious blood was shed. And is buying you back right now. Are you willing to be bought by Jesus? Or are you still handing your soul over to the devil? By keeping your silver coins with you. Are you ready to throw those silver coins? buy you back but he gives you a choice he gives you the freedom if only you are willing to throw every single coin especially in your private life your secret life if you are willing to throw he is willing to buy you because on that throne he is screaming and shouting and saying, I want this man. I want this woman. This man is my son, my daughter. I want to save them. But he can do that only if you are willing to throw that coin. Judas threw the coin. He repented. But he did not believe in the free forgiveness that comes through the blood of Jesus. He got deceived. Satan condemned him. Satan put so much of guilt in him that he decided to go and hang himself. Peter also betrayed. But Peter repented and believed in the forgiveness. He denied Jesus three times. All the others fled when Jesus hung on the cross. But each of them repented and believed in the forgiveness of Jesus. My friend, there is no sin so deep that Jesus cannot forgive. He is willing to set you free from whatever captivity you are in. But are you willing to throw those silver coins? <coughs> if you are willing to throw those coins and experience freedom, let us all go on our knees. Time to be set free from all captivity. No matter how many years you have been bound, the blood of Jesus has the power to set you free. To set you free from every power of sin, even without withdrawals, because there is no power greater than the power of Jesus. Nothing in this world can satisfy you, but only Jesus. And he's here in our midst, ready to buy you back. Talk to Jesus, confess, and tell him, Yes, Lord, I'm ready to throw away all these coins. Nobody knows it, it's a secret, but there is nothing 
hidden from you. Now, with my own choice, willingly, with my heart, I turn my back to Satan and I turn to you. I throw away all those coins covered with innocent blood. I don't want them anymore in my life. So even as you have made a commitment, remember that a true repentance means no turning back. And you will be tried and you will be tested. But do not fear, do not give up. Jesus loves you. He paid the price for you. And the greatest words, at the greatest moment in history, by the greatest man who ever lived, was, it is finished. It is finished. So take courage, brothers and sisters, that your struggle, your struggle with temptation and sin, has been defeated and death has lost its sting on the cross when Jesus said those powerful words, it is finished. And if truly you believe it is finished and done for in your life, we will all pray together. But just take these next few seconds to truly, truly introspect and check yourself whether you mean what you say or not. Whether it is going to be for Jesus, there is no other way. There is no middle path. It's only either Jesus or Satan. There is no middle path. You cannot have one leg in Satan's court and one leg in Jesus' kingdom. It won't work. So take these few moments of silence and truly Take a strong decision. The choice is yours. Jesus is before the Father's right hand. He's at the Father's right hand. And Jesus is pleading your case. His price is a priceless price paid for by His precious blood. few moments, truly, with a broken heart, come back to the Father. The Father wants you back. And that's why He sent Jesus. Don't let the sacrifice of Jesus go in vain. He did it just for you. They never pushed Him to the cross. They never forced Him to the cross. But He endured the suffering of the cross because he saw how joyful it will be for you and me to be with him in paradise forever. How joyful it will be for you and me to live life on this earth just as it is in heaven, as we say the Our Father, as it is, in, as it is on earth as in heaven. Friends, heaven on earth is God's plan for you. Heaven on earth is God's purpose for you. God loves you just as you are. But He refuses to allow you to remain where you are. He wants you to be just like Jesus. So as you are taking this decision right now, it's a decision to be like Jesus. To be an imitator of Jesus. And those of you who have made this bold decision to live life just like Jesus commanded us to in his word. As he said, if you love me, you will keep my word. Those of you who have made this decision, please confess this prayer after me. And those of you who are still struggling with this decision, remember Jesus struggled on the cross, undergoing excruciating agony spiritual, emotional, as well as physical for you. He did it just for you. He's standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. 
Why don't you let him come in? The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? And as we just sing this chorus, just take this time out. Take this time out to introspect. To introspect and to ask the Lord truly to allow you to live a life of surrender to Jesus.